Well, today Bob Iger and Disney defeated the YouTube ogres and the Nelson Peltz crowd that was trying to force their way onto a board seat, a couple board seats, and pulling off a proxy war that really wasted a lot of time. And uh, I, it just blows my mind how people could challenge a person like Bob Iger, perhaps the greatest CEO America has ever seen, what he's done for Disney ever since he, he took over the last two decades and then was brought back to fix things in 2022. It just blows my mind that people would even question his judgment, especially when he was fixing things in the midst of fixing things and had to be interrupted by this stupid proxy war. And I am a huge Bob Iger fan, if you haven't noticed. Read his, I read his autobiography, read it again and again. Here we go. Robert Iger, The Ride of a Lifetime. Awesome book. Um, but it blows my mind how the YouTube haters, the YouTube ogres would always be critical of him. And uh, it's despite him putting out success after success, and then when he disappears, when he's, he retires and is gone for a year, how the company collapses and they bring him back and it reemerges. Why would you question someone like that? I just don't get it. But that's what was going on in this case. Um, I feel bad for Bob that he had to deal with this mess in the midst of everything. Um, and it, again, it just blows my mind that people would question the judgment like that. I come from the world of the NBA and people like people who win multiple championships like Greg Popovich, Eric Spolstra, Steve Kerr, they've got those jobs for life. <laughs> I mean, they don't, I mean, they make a question here and there, but not question to be replaced or question for their job. You know, I've disagreed with Pop and Kerr and over thing over certain things, but I would always give it up that I know, I don't know more than they do when it comes to coaching. And that's what it seemed like a lot of these, I guess you would call them Disney activists were saying, trying to correct different things that Bob Iger was already correcting. Whether you, you know, look at, you know, um, the, the, the movies that were suffered poor, you know, box office returns or the Marvel burnout or everything that was going on. Bob Iger agreed with all that. He was addressing all that and, and steps have been put in place. Movies have been halted. There's been all kinds of adjustments made accordingly. So when you're complaining about what's already been adjusted, it's just pointless. But there was a lot of this going on. And what used to bug me is, as a Bob Iger fan, I'm always on YouTube looking for newest videos of him. The hate that would come out of every corner and I would watch these videos and they made no sense at all. It kind of reminds me of the whole Donald Trump syndrome, how for the last eight years, there are still people that back him and believe him, even though eight years ago, we knew what he was. And the, it's the same thing in this case of the, the Bob Iger ogres, as I call them, who you know, went down handily in this proxy war. Thank God for people like the Jobs family the Lucas family and, and everybody else who put their support and stayed with their loyalty. I mean, don't forget back in 2006, I believe it was, is when Iger put his neck on the line and went with, you know, convinced Steve Jobs to sell Pixar to Disney. A huge revolutionary moment for Disney animation and not to mention Pixar too. 2009, we saw Marvel get bought up by them and the rest is history. 33 movies that produced $30 billion in revenue worldwide nothing's ever been done in the history of movies like that then you go to 2012 you've got lucasfilm the star wars franchise one of my favorite tv shows ever actually my favorite tv show ever andor comes out of that rogue one a lot of you know quality movies to come not to mention the 20th century studios the fox purchase the you know when they bought 20th century fox and converted it to a disney property with hulu being the mainstream source you know, whether it be streaming or superhero movies or animation, Iger was at the forefront of all that, transforming a $50, mil, $50 billion company when he took over to a $200 billion company when he exited. And he's bringing it right back again. So God bless Bob Iger and everything he's been doing. And, and he is continually innovating, being totally innovative at, at Disney, whether it be the, uh, the epic deal, the Epic Games deal they did, the makers of Fortnite capturing the video game market in the future, and not to mention the, the next generation audience that needs to be captured. Disney didn't have a video game go-to, and now they do. 
you look at the sports move they made by bundling uh, Turner and TBS and Fox and um, not to mention with ESPN and how they'll own 70% of that market. And when it comes to streaming, when the next time the TV deals are made, they really have a corner on that market. Not to mention the market that comes from that, whether it be streaming or uh, FanDuel, DraftKings type things or betting sites. You know, all kinds of untapped markets that are gonna set to explode. There's just so much that he's doing that's five chess moves ahead that people who are playing checkers two moves behind for some reason don't see it and it just blows my mind but obviously when push came to shove i don't know if he got more than 90 percent of the vote or whatever it was it was a landslide and deservedly slow <laughs> deservedly so bob Iger came out on top and sorry youtube ogres sorry nelson pelts Negativity does not always sell. It does not always win in the end.